Hello, welcome back. While his hapless on-screen character might have little luck finding treasure, Mackenzie Crook certainly has had no trouble scooping up the prizes. And he struck gold, writing, directing and starring in the comedy series The Detectorist, landing two BAFTAs for the first season. So naturally, of course, he's back with a second. Mm -hmm. He's here with us now. Morning to you. Lovely to see you. Morning. You. Um, before we have a chat, have we, we'll have a little look at the clip of the programme. Right. Come on, then. Oh. Yeah. Can I feed him? You want him? Yeah, go on, then. Hello, oh, Stanley. Support his head. Yeah, I know. Support his head. I am. I am. Well done, Stanley. Check it's not too hot by putting a bit on your... It's good. Here we go. What? That's... The milk is... What? Nothing. Uh, Mackenzie Crook is here with us now. His uncle's germs, doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> Oh, very good morning to you. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Um, so this is the second series, mm. and it's moved on, what, about a year after the first series, yes. hasn't it? Yes, yeah, it's a year later on from when we left them on the first series. So uh, Andy and Becky are now married, and they have this baby Stanley. Yeah, it's who your, your character's sort of looking after mostly. Yes, well, Becky's gone back to work. Andy's still without a job, so he's still metal detecting, but now with a baby. Mm. And this is you, very much your baby. Isn't uh, it? The detectorist. So yes, yes, of course. I thought <laughs> <laughs> it's not your baby. That no, no, no. Baby. That was no. an actor baby. Yes. But um, yeah, detectorist is, was my idea, and yeah, I wrote it and directed it. Mm. Mm. Um, so you already knew when you had this first series that there was a second series planned. That must have been quite a moment to, to realise that it was going to be commissioned again. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was that was wonderful. I, you know, I, I wasn't even sure that anybody would understand what I was trying to do with the first series. You know, on paper, the idea of two middle-aged blokes out metal detecting and talking rubbish to each other isn't a particularly exciting idea, but, you know, that it was a success and we got a second series was, uh, was fantastic. Well, it's a nice thing, but it's, it's, it's a nice, relaxing, easy watch. It's not gag-tastic, right. if you like, and you designed it specifically like that. Yes, yeah, I, I, I knew I wanted it to be um, uh, very sort of low-key and, and, yeah, space between the jokes and, uh, yeah, so, so yeah. So. Um, and tell me about um, detectors. Have you always been fascinated by people who go out metal? I'm, I'm going to get the terminology wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> metal um, detecting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have always been fascinated. It's not actually a hobby of mine. Well, it sort of is now. I've sort of got into it through doing this programme. But, yeah. um, I mean, I've, I've always been fascinated in hobbies in general and collections. I've always had collections and those sort of niche, nerdy, traditionally nerdy hobbies. Because your dad was a coin collector. Mm -hmm. And then you... No, you, did you scoff at him when he had a coin collection when you were he, a child? he used to try and get me interested in it, and I just simply wasn't interested. I couldn't see what was, what, what was appealing about it at all until I got to sort of my mid-30s, and suddenly something in my brain shifted. And well, I what suddenly... is it? What's it about coins that's so fascinating? <laughs> that's very scathing. <laughs> no, no, it's um, an open question. It's, well, it's the, I think it's the social history that um, all of my coins, are, uh, they have been circulated, and so somebody would have used that to buy whatever, mm -hmm. you know, however long ago. And to, um, it's the same with metal detecting, when you pull up a coin that hasn't been seen for hundreds of years. So what's your years. rarest or your most precious coin? Um, I've, got, um, <laughs> I've got a George the First Woods uh, halfpenny. That won't mean anything to you, but in America, they go crazy over that. George oh, the First. Mm. And have you found some of these coins? Or you, or uh, you I found a few recently, right? but, but in bad condition. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we take a look at, uh, <clears throat> just remind ourselves from the first series where you're being told off by your screen wife about your hobby. Here you go. Yes. You are always staring at the ground. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> you are. You're always scanning the ground looking for stuff. You can't help yourself. It's all those years detecting. You never look up. No wonder you've got a bad back. Come on. Honestly, I bet you'd be amazed at the things you've missed because you've been locked in your own little world, staring at the floor. Rubbish. <laughs> And the wife played there by Rachel Sterling, yes. who's the daughter of Diana Rigg, and yes. her mother in the series is played by Diana Rigg. That's right. How, did they, is that a deal that they both come together? <laughs> they, apparently, Diana was a big fan of the first series, and, and yeah, me and Rachel and the producer Adam Tandy sort of came up with the idea of why don't we ask if she wants to be in it, and she oh. was very happy to do, she, she was only available for one day, so we, we did two scenes, one in the first episode, one in the sixth. Okay. 
Um, and tell us a little bit about um, where it's filmed, because it, and you got some sunshine, didn't you? Were you lucky with that? Or? Yeah, well, first, the first series, we, we had perfect weather all the way through. This time around, it's a little bit more tricky. It was a few rainy days, but... It didn't look like it. No, it looks so beautiful. It's all shot in Suffolk. Um, and, yeah, I mean... You've been, elsewhere in your career, you've been part of an amazing uh, cinema franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean. You've yes. You've been in... Th was it three of them? The first three. First in, three. Yes. And then the fourth one comes along, you go, no... Nah, not for me, because you're doing this? Yeah, well, this is... It, they'd, they'd just made a fifth Pirates one. But, yeah, I mean, it wasn't really a choice. You know, this is, as you say, my baby, and and uh, the Pirates movie was it exactly the same time as doing mm. the second series of this, so it wasn't really a choice for me. Yes, it's interesting, because I'm not sure... Um, everybody would turn around big Hollywood movies by, like that, but <laughs> you yeah, had to. <laughs> but, you know, I love doing Detectress so very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the music in Detectress, because it's beautiful music, and you were part of um, setting that up and all the rest with a friend, is that right? Yeah, my friend Johnny Flynn wrote the music, him and, and a guy called Dan Michelson. Um, I worked with Johnny, who's... You, you probably know he's an actor as well. I worked with him a few years ago, and I loved his music, and I asked if he'd... Uh, Compose the soundtrack for Detectress. And do you like writing for people that you know well? Does that make it easier for you? Absolutely, yes. I mean, most of these parts in Detectress, I had someone in mind and wrote it for them. What sort of feedback have you had from Detectorists? They love it. In general, they love it. I know they were very nervous before the first series went out. They were worried that they were going to be, you know, taking the mickey out of and, and mm. it would be a parody. But I, I think... Pretty much, they've, they've embraced it. Because it does, it does take the mickey, but in a sort of gentle, loving way. Yeah, I think that it's truthful to the hobby. You know, the, the fact is, most of the time, they, they find buttons and buckles, and it's only <laughs> occasionally they'll find the, the interesting things, but, yeah. And how like your character are you? To be honest, a, a lot. <laughs> it's, sort <laughs> of a, it's sort of a more pathetic version of me, uh, an exaggerated version of me. Oh, well, it's really nice lovely. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks, much. Mackenzie. Thank nice you. you. The Detector starts again, BBC Four, on Thursday, the 29th of October. Charlie and I will be here tomorrow morning from 6 on BBC One. And now it's over to the Rip Off Britain studio for this morning's mix of investigations, advice and more of your problems tackled on the spot. Good morning. Good morning.